So I learned to make ocarinas when I was 15. <coughs> First ocarinas I sold, I didn't even fire yet, they broke, but I, ocarinas. And I've been making ocarinas for almost 40 years now. But a few years ago, I went to markets and I sold them. I was behind my stand to really fit those. And people said, oh, that's nice. I would like to play like that. I cannot play like, like that. So I made a book, and, but people find it complicated. So you have ocarina, you like the guy who's playing it, and you buy an ocarina and it ends up in your drawer. Yeah. Like, and, and I got bored of it because I, didn't wa I did want to make something that people could play easy. And I found out it's not about the, it's not about the, the music, it's about the sound. Then I got really sick for a while. I had some, some problems and I was laying in the bed most of the time, but I was possible to, to, to a few hours a day to play. A, a, a little bit. And I got from a friend of me, he bought me a xun. It's like an egg of ceramic. It's a Chinese instrument. Mm -hmm. You play it like this and it's quite difficult. Okay, but you play it like this. What if you could play it like this? Mm -hmm. Like you're praying. Mm -hmm. Like this. And then I got a bit better and I started meditating and I did uh, Qigong. And then in Qigong I learned um, uh, um, um, the practice, it's like you really relax and you exhale slowly and you make a sound, what we did, mm -hmm. like really low and slow. And if you exhale slowly, you hear your heartbeat and you hear where your tension is. And then I thought, imagine you also could relieve your throat. So we have a flute, you hold like this, completely relaxed, and you just sigh. like a meditation, you do nothing. So if you do nothing, I made it like that. So all the function of the flute was taken over. And when I hold it and I sigh, you can sigh for half a minute longer because you don't need any pressure. So then I made holes in it to make some tones. Actually, it's not really important to play a melody because it's more a mirror of the breath, this flute, than it's actually an instrument. any pressure on my lips it won't work so if you don't relax if you cannot relax the the enlightenment comes after the suffering it's like that said so that was the first flute i made and i find myself again sometimes on the market or festival on the but in front of my stand sh sharing my enthusiasm uh, with people and, 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 and not worrying about songs or they're afraid because people, if you relax, you can play it. So take a flute, sit under a tree, go try on the toilet at home or whatever. And it was, it opened up something completely new because I was not making music anymore, but I was making sounds. And then while I was making those and still some ocarinas, uh, um, a guy contacted me from Belgium, it's a Belgian flute maker, Bram van Overbeker, makes beautiful instruments, he said. I found on the internet, I saw a guy, he had an instrument with three vessels and he played, wow, like incredible, you know? And he showed me the, the video and I said, the amazing, beautiful instrument. I said, wow. And um, I had a book in my, in, in my uh, you say cupboard, no? Yeah. And, and it has a picture on the front of, an instrument like that, but I thought it, you know, it was a thing, you blew on it and that was it. I didn't know it was such a beautiful instrument. And I found the guy was Alan Tower, mm -hmm. a friend of us, of LA. 
And uh, I looked him up and I saw on the video that he was playing an instrument. Um, on the internet I found the instruments were made by Sharon Rowell. That's an, uh, a lady, she died three weeks ago. Oh. It's a pity, she was really old and sick. And in the 80s she invented, um, actually she was a student just finished of the art academy and she wanted to work there because if in, Los, in San Francisco, if you work at the art, art academy, you get a small uh, place near San Francisco Bay and all the artists were living there. She was a white lady, so she wanted to live there. And they asked, uh, uh, and she said, okay, I want to make art, I want to work here. They said, no, well, uh, all the stages are full, but we're still looking for somebody who wants to learn people, uh, to teach people to make ocarinas. And she said, I don't want to make ocarinas, I want to, you know, I want to sculpture and make things, not ocarinas. So she got a studio and she started to make uh, uh, ocarinas. And I thought she was a wild lady and she just, she just uh, 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 broke up with her boyfriend. So at one evening, she told me this herself, it's not made up, when she was at 90 years old, so funny. She was in San Francisco Bay and it was foggy outside and she heard the horns of the... Of the, of the stop horns. <coughs> and she told me, the sound made me a bit... The sound made me a bit horny, she said. I was <laughs> like, so she started to make vessels with one tone, with one tone, <laughs> first with two flutes and then with three, and she, and she. And when you play them yourself, the sound comes out of to the ears and you are in a kind of three dimensional horn. And then she found out, I, maybe I can make some, some holes in it. And then she thought, maybe I can make a scale. And then she thought, when I make holes in the back, I can play with three hands. <laughs> She called it Huwaka. That's another story. Why it's called Huwaka? It's too much stories. If you want, I'll tell you later. And she found out that the sound, the three tones that going around, did something with people. People got, got, got emotional or started crying or, you know, all, all kinds of, of, of emotions. And she got in touch by the wife of Ellen, by the way, with a Mexican shaman. His name was Rafael Bejaran. He played big didgeridoos made of uh, 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 acave, you know, yeah. the, the big ones. Mm -hmm. And he played on the uh, uh, on, on big gatherings where people, world leaders come. And he played uh, that and he made these instruments too, but he made them like more pentatonic. And he played really rhythmically in front of people and near their faces because he said uh, he wanted to touch their... their uh, same thing. Not the spine here. How you yeah. have? Pineal? No. Pineal? Yes, the pineal. exactly. Okay. So he made his own instruments, and Alan, the instrument I saw Alan play on on the internet, uh, uh, was an instrument of his. So now we're back at the friend telling me, uh, I found an in instrument uh, uh, on the internet, and Alan Tao was playing it. So we looked up Rafael Beirano, and my friend. Uh, uh, what set me back is that I just found an, uh, uh, an, an, an press message, release. press release from Reuters mm -hmm. that that guy was killed this morning. Mm -hmm. He was with a group of 20 tourists doing a sound session like this in the neighbor of the pyramids 
in Egypt. They had big black bags with the didgeridoos and the, and the, and the Egyptian army thought they were terrorists. <laughs> they sent a helicopter and with two rockets. And only his, only his mother survived. <laughs> yes, we go meet her next year. But, and, and so that was the moment I found out about Ellen and I found out about uh, this instrument and about Sharon Rowell and about Raphael. And I mailed Ellen like, hello, I'm Hans, I'm Dutch, I'm a flute maker and I'm sorry about your friend. And I think 50 minutes, less than half an hour later, I got a message back from him and said, I just heard my friend die. And five minutes later, your email came in. I don't want to do anything to do with you. It's too much. Because he said, I'm interested in the flute and maybe I can yeah. help. <laughs> it was. And he said, yeah. Ellen said, this is yeah. too weird. You yeah. just died. And it's too weird. You know, five minutes later, you're writing. So, you to help. Ellen was off. And, but I, I saw the instrument. So I looked up all the videos I could find of this instrument. There was nothing. Only one video of Raphael playing this instrument. So I looked the video, I turned back and again. And, and I, I, I constructed an instrument I thought was like his instrument. And then after a month, Alan contacted me, can we Skype? And I said, yes, okay. So Alan said, there's nobody anymore in the world making uh, this instrument. Could you, like you offered, maybe try? And I said, you mean something like this? Because I, I made it. And it was, I was correct. It was in Huwaka. So I started to make Huwakas. And then he said, yes, it's nice. But Rafa always played. We were making like an instrument that's more close to people, more around that. I said, you know, I'm, I'm not into hocus pocus. You know, I'm a flute, that's flute maker. I just make instruments. But I, I knew this instrument did something with the sound. You know, it, it, it filled and I started making wakas and I went to, again, festivals and markets. And every time I had a big one, and when I played to, for instance, a woman that was in a period, they start to cry. They, they, they said, oh, I feel it here. I said, there's something about, it's something about the sound. So I learned more about these instruments and about this sound, but still I didn't know how to do it until I made a big Zen flute and on the market I for fun put it on somebody's head that was sitting and I blew like, but then much lower. And the guy said, whoa, the sound is, you know, going. And then I thought, oh, waka. We put it not in front of the head, we put it on the head. <laughs> so I started to make instruments you can put on the head. I start to make even double flutes and I got in contact with a, 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 you know, a psychologue. A, yes, a psychologist. A psychologist. He said, I would like to use this instrument for EMDR. So, you know, with, with, because I think we, uh, we can use it. So I start to make double flutes also. And, and... The sound goes like this when you play it yourself. So, so you have the shift called the constantes. So I start making the also for put on the head and different tunings, and I really start to get in, 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 in not making music because this instrument was much too difficult. Almost nobody can. Uh, it, it's melodic. So, and and then we find out. Let's make an instrument you can put on the head, but also, uh, um, whatever you do, it's okay. So I start to get into harmonics. I got in touch with Mark Deutz. He's from San Francisco. He has a whole new system about uh, 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 proportional harmony. When you play the piano, it's 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 tuned tempered. And why? It's 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 like it's not exactly right. But when you transpose, you have still have the same sound. But your brain has to calculate a little bit so it's correct in your head. But if you put, for instance, like nine notes. And you don't have to transpose. You can tune those notes exactly, so there's no interference, and and, and you can, can can collect the sound without effort. It goes easy. So that's tuning. I I start to make it. it in the beginning, they didn't look like this. We start to make the innate, and we call it innate because the sound is like inborn. It's like three flutes, but it doesn't matter. Any combination of holes, it's a harmony, proportional harmony. So you don't play music, you play harmony. So the idea is when you put it on somebody's head, this resonates through the skull to the inner ear and you fool the brain because the brain doesn't know anymore where the sound comes from. So if you let go, the brain thinks, okay, I'm inside the organ, I'm inside of, of, of the flute. So the idea is 
when the sound is everywhere, you can be nowhere. When it's not music, but just harmony, you listen to nothing. Because it's not, oh, it sounds like this or that. It's not the melody, it's just the harmony. So you can listen to nothing. And when you don't play your rhythm, it can be anywhere or everywhere. So it's just the place somebody thought so beautiful. It's like you're always in, in that, in that uh, waterfall of thoughts and impressions around you. It's like you can step one, one a little bit back into the cave behind the waterfall. It's still there, but it's a moment to be just here and now or, or nowhere. And that became the inner. It took three years to, to it's, it's the most difficult, the most easy instrument to play, but the most difficult to build. And it's still evolving. And uh, um, normally I can play it on somebody's head. We can do it after if you want to have experience. But now I, I just let it. Uh, and because I'm a musician, I always try to make music on it still. But it's better in the hands of somebody who never played it. So after you can try it. Uh, because then it sounds the best when you don't do any effort to make it sound like something. And then after, <clears throat> I went back to making ocarinas, but in a different way. I didn't want to make ocarinas with a book, with tones that... So I, I looked at the, at the Native American flute, and I thought that all the tunings I used before were in that instrument, and in many other instruments, in the banzu, in, in all the other instruments I found <coughs> on, on the earth, the same tunings are, are in there. So I took the Native American flute as an example, and I, I put it in my ocarinas and I start to make small ocarinas again, but pentatonic. So the holes are the same like a Native American flute, the five holes, this fourth is closed. Whole other story, why is that? But I tell you another time. So I, I could make my small flutes again. Uh, flutes again. start to make bigger ocarinas. <laughs> um, so, so. And bigger ocarinas. didn't fit in my suitcase but now I have ocarinas <laughs> like this 
So that one moment when I heard one person died gave me a complete new life. And he's always looking at the back of my shoulder. Now Shan Rao is sitting here and they like, no, let's go like this. Less than two years ago, I went for the first time to America. We came together with the residence group and, and, and uh, I had a lot of these with me in the big box I sent. And we were in Paso Roble in, in California at the hotel monastery. And we had a presentation there. Many people like, like, like here. Because you know what happens when I play the ocarina after one day, I'm completely tired. Playing this whole day on people's heads doesn't make me tired. After the whole show, the guy said, uh, uh, the, the boss of the hotel, part of the residence group, uh, Douglas I Iris, he said, uh, it's a pity you, can, you, you go, you know, and you don't stay here. But I was experimenting with these sounds. I recorded the sounds of this flute in the special studio, and I put them in small, cheap MP3 players. And I put them, the sounds in, in a circle, and I put them on, and when you walk the circle, it's beautiful. You have different sounds. So I took the MP3 players with me, and he, outside the hotel, he had a beautiful labyrinth. So I said, just wait. We put the balls around the labyrinth, and he started with the labyrinth and said, that's what I want. So I went home. I found a way to build in, make bigger ones with a sensor, so they react on your body heat. And when you walk the labyrinth or the circle, they play for you. Every time a different tone, wow. at random, but it's like you're inside the innate, but it's all around you. These are the sounds of the harmonics of a tuning fork. So not the actual sound of the tuning fork, but what comes after. That's what you don't hear. They are recorded with a very sensitive mi microphone. So they were attacked somewhere and then into the microphone and coming by. It's the same recording. It's like 20 different recordings, but of the same tuning fork, we put them around here. Actually, it would be better to have a circle, but it, I think it's okay now. And we put them on and then we listened for three, four minutes to see what happens if you have two equal tempered tones, but played on a different moment. It starts to shift around. And that's a little bit the effect of the sound circle. So this is the effect we call random, omnidirectional, harmonic sounds, ROS. And that's what we're working on it. This is a prototype. What's happening with these little guys, I show you. It's a kind of sound player inside, but it doesn't have a speaker. It uses the ceramic shell as a resonator. So the sound is everywhere. And we're working on it now to get these guys with a remote with 50 different compositions on the random compositions. So you can use them, you put them on, you put them out, you can put the sensor on and out. So it's a whole new experience of, of working with sound. This is self-generating because of each of the different frequencies? They are, they, they are working random. alone, but the sounds inside are harmonic yeah. and they record in a special way. Yeah. So they interfere just by, by being there. So the sound sometimes go yeah. a real circle and seven of these, it's a better experience. But my suitcase was full. So uh, like that, you really sound coming there and then sometimes you don't know. And, uh, and they're so powerful, it's only half a watt. But when you put, for instance, a crystal bell in it, we did an experience with people sitting in front. We had a crystal bell and we had this thing with exactly the same sound as that bell. And we put them beside and people couldn't hear almost which was the bell or which was the marble. We use them like instruments too. Yeah. We have bells, we have three on and you walk through them. While you're doing your instrument, you have the, the coconuts on your body. Or you go with many people just around. So the sound comes everywhere. So it's really nice to juggle with. Even. Oh, well. <laughs> so, uh, and this year you're still going to Budapest? 
Yes, I'm back? going in, 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 in December. We go to 4D Sound. That's one of the most advanced uh, uh, laboratories of sound in the world, in Budapest. Together with one person of our... We met also of our uh, group. And we go uh, investigate uh, the shells, the players. All the sound comes from the instruments to see what actually is happening. So, in the same time, we have now... Um, Trey Shahan, uh, or Shay Trahan, that's one of the other guys. He's an oral ar 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 architect. He, he uh, designs mm -hmm. big buildings with sound, but he designed a complete new EEG system that records when we're making flutes with a wrist thing. Mm -hmm. So we, we, every time we go play, we play for free, but we ask people, can we record? your actions, so to see what happened with the, the people. biomarkers, mm. yes. what's yeah. happening in the, in the bodies yeah. you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. And this, uh, <coughs> I mentioned to a few people in the group, the, the institute in Budapest is cutting edge in the world and it's basically researching omnidirectional spatial sound uh, 4D from all directions with transducers so that the floor is vibrating and we, we come into a complete novel experience of our embodiment. It's yeah. like you experience yourself as a field, as a field of vibration, and the vibration can go through this way, this way, diagonally through the systems, and they have since two, three years, uh, the foremost young avant-garde sound artists there from all over the world, they can work in artists in residence, and they all experiment with the sound system, it's a space larger than this, but three stories open. And they do, these young people make all these amazing compositions that you actually feel the vibrations going through your body. Imagine and you have experiences, it's like the, the body, it's a new experience in the body. Yes. You experience your body as a feeling. Of awareness. Even. Yeah, also, which can, yeah. which can disappear, which can con condense, which can expand and, and yeah. wake. You awake. They have a technique. Yes. They within with, with with ultrasonic sound. They can make a virtual space inside the space, and you can record inside of that space. Or you you let you hear sound like you're in the Sixteen Chapel, because they have the environment. Not even that, but suppose you're in front of an or an orchestra who starts to play. Suddenly the orchestra goes through you, turns around. You yeah. go through the flute out of the violin. So As I said, you can really. It goes through you and it turns around and suddenly you think you're upside down. So it also works on the on your sensory perception of balance because which is yeah. in the inner ear. It's a complete novel experience being in the body. Yes. Or not limited to the body. And then yeah. we come into this real thing, what we know from the mystic traditions, we're fields. We're fields of yeah. energy in different densities. And it's so fantastic that so many young artists work on yeah. that. But now we go one step further. Because part of the Western School, his name is Norbert Veil. That's a guy, old guy, he's as Asperger, he lives alone somewhere in, in, in an old barn. And he invented 20 years ago a new technique uh, uh, that was amazing, but he was sitting on it like an egg because he was afraid to give it away. He found a way to record with crystals. The way he does it, he has a whole barn. And he has plugs in the wall with crystals. He has a case of Faraday. A case of, of, of Faraday. So all the first he cleans up the space of all radiation, all kinds of things, and then his technique is, he said, sound is it's a wave, you know, but the wave is only a transporter. What a transport is resonance, but also intentions, consciousness, consciousness, the consciousness of which a building is built, an instrument is built, the 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 the, the moment uh, somebody plays. The thought of the moment who thinks that his mother, what, the, what his mother would think while he's playing. Every intention ever have to be done with the space and the persons, you can record. And, that, and the incredible thing is that that doesn't cost any energy. So first he cleans up, so what you don't, what's not there, you don't have to record. And then he uses crystals in his microphones, in the wires, in his whole setup. And all the all the we did recordings there, and he have a setup. It's really incredible. He has two old Philips speakers of nine watts, just simple speakers of 1974, <laughs> and he puts them on nine watts in his room, 
and you hear the recording of a big church organ with two foot pipes, you know, the really big, really low pipes, with a woman singing. And the walls start to tremble. You hear the organ like you're there. You feel, in, you feel the feeling of the church. You hear the emotion of the woman, a little bit trembling, because she's nervous of that recording. You hear the, the guy, you feel the guy playing the organ, not even that. You only have two small speakers standing there, and you can walk around the speakers. Doesn't matter, the, the sound doesn't come out of the speakers. They, they, they provide the, the, the momentum, but the sound is, is everywhere. When you go outside the door, it's, it's like they're really playing. And not even that, when you walk to the singer, in space, you can almost walk around her, and the sound is... It's so incredible, many people have come and went again because they said, this is incredible, this is like... Uh, I was there with, with CEO of Google, Ivy Ross, I was there with many people, and, and they say, I never had... Um, what's the <coughs> word? Um, um, Some experience. Some experience, I cannot explain it, but <coughs> we don't know how to get this out of this room. When we can reproduce this out of this room, it changes the world in sound. It really does. So I, first time I met Norbert, it took me. Re, it's a difficult guy. So it, it really took me to get known. And I went back. And I went back. And I went back. And I took people and I said, "No, we don't want to steal anything of you. Don't put here's the big safe. All the papers are in there." Mm -hmm. And then I recorded my CD there. And then, uh, and then finally I found Paul Oden, the guy mm -hmm. of Forty Sounds, and I took him there. And he was there and he said, this is what I was waiting for all my life. I have the technique, but what you have, I cannot record. If you can reproduce this in my laboratory, then we can work together. So now they are coming and I think next year, maybe year after, the whole setup is going to Paul's laboratory okay. and they go reproduce it and, to, and, I, and, and that's something beautiful. So the beautiful yeah. thing of this one is just like to, to, to wrap it up. Uh, and this, all this, what, what Hans told, is happening in the last three, four years. Yes. One way. Through. And, and in one way, it's so beautiful yeah. for me also that how they said that Auroville is on, is on that map, because it's really there on this forefront and cutting edge of matter and vibration and consciousness. Yes. That's basic, the, the research. And it's almost sometimes we have to hold on because yeah. things happen very quick and the, the things which come and the people you meet from all over the world. And I heard from a few people who went to the studio in Holland, just everybody, you know, just you cannot hold people cry a lot and stuff because it, it just dissolves yes. our holdings and, and, and our amours and all of that.